Good morning, everybody. I'm so happy to meet you again. Today we'll talk about very important and new idea about use of transcranial Doppler in emergency area and emergency situation. We'll talk about great rule of transcranial Doppler in immediate diagnosis of cerebral hemorrhage. Today, we are not going to look for the brain blood vessels. We are going to look for the brain tissue to know how, what's going on in the brain tissue and to diagnose immediately the cerebral hemorrhage. Before I start my project, I need to announce about this important event will be held in Bahrain, in Mustashfa Salam, Salam uh, Specialist Hostel, uh, in next Friday and Saturday. This is the Emergency Neurological Life Support, sponsored by American Academy of Neurology. It's the first time to be held in the Middle East. There will be imminent uh, instructor for this project will give a very important lecture about neurological emergency. I have the opportunity, I, great, <clears throat> I have the opportunity to present and uh, as a lecture and workshop the, trans the use of transcranial Doppler in stroke and the use of optic nerve sheet diameter. Uh, in second day will be inshallah great uh, job about uh, these areas okay uh, i believe would be very helpful for anyone uh, looking for emergency situation of neurology okay let us see this important value of transcranial doppler which i believe will be the future because it deserves that in 1996 Journal of Neuroimaging, the people were great at that time. They are talk about this important transcranial color coded duplex sonography in visualization of blood flow velocity of the basal cerebral arteries, in visualization of brain parenchyma, and visualization of the dislocation of the third ventricle, which is the midline structure, in the right to the right or left due to space combined lesion whatever stroke or its way. So they are talking about three value of the transcranial Doppler. Investigating of the blood vessel of the brain, flow velocity, investigating the brain tissue and looking for the midline shift by looking for the midline structure, which is the third ventricle. And I did, I believe important topic about this midline shift uh, in the previous project. Uh, and I talk uh, in detail about this. Today, I'm going to talk about the value of transcranial Doppler in cerebral hemorrhage, how to diagnose cerebral hemorrhage in, by transcranial Doppler. What else? In Journal of Neuroimaging in 1993, the people at that time, many, many, many years ago, they talk about how to differentiate between ischemic and hemorrhagic stroke by transcranial color coded real type sonography. They did a small study, they apply transcranial Doppler for 20 patients with ischemic stroke and the 28 patients with hemorrhagic stroke. In all patients, the sonographic diagnosis corresponded closely to CT brain. Recent hemorrhage were visualized as hyper equidense mass. The high contrast to minor equidense adjacent to parenchyma lead to clear sonographic distinction. So they find the hemorrhage, recent hemorrhage appear as ecogenic, more white. And the presence of the contrast in ecogenicity between the brain tissue, normal brain tissue, and this hyperechoic hemorrhage, this difference in contrast, the transcranial Doppler appears very clearly as a hemorrhage by hyper in dense area. Moreover, they follow up the clots and they found that with, with time, there is continuous increase in ecogenicity, decrease in ecogenicity, and subsequently were interspersed by hypo dense uh, zone. So they diagnose the hemorrhage and follow up the hemorrhage by looking for the ecogenicity of the bleed. Great, great job. This was 1993. What else? In 1998, they did a very big study to differentiate between intercerebral hemorrhage and ischemic stroke by transcranial Doppler. They, we are talking about now about 151 patients. According to CT criteria, 60 patients had intracerebral hemorrhage and more than 60 patients had ischemic stroke. In 24 patients, CT findings were inconclusive. On sonographic examination, great. 
there is we know there is open cycle portal screen your doppler there was 12 percent no sufficient acoustic phone window to visualize the brain but in the remaining 133 patient 95 percent of the time the diagnosis were correct by ultrasound in agreement with ct great 95% there's agreement between the diagnosis of CT, which is a gold standard in diagnosing brain hemorrhage and the transcranial Doppler. Conclusion, in comparison to the gold standard of CT, transcranial identifies stroke complication and differentiates between in the cerebral hemorrhage and ischemic stroke. By talking about stroke complications, you talk about dilatation of the ventricle, which is clearly appear in transcranial Doppler, and they talk about midline shape, which we talk about previously in the previous portion. So, transcranial Doppler may complement the clinical examination in patients with acute stroke. In addition, it may also be useful in detecting stroke complication in the follow-up stroke patient. This was in 90s. They were great people. In 2000, European Journal of Neurology talk about how transcranial color coded sonography for bedside evaluation of mass effect of stroke by look for differentiation for and in this study they find a very minimal difference between CT and the transcranial in the thalamic midline shape. They only find almost one millimeter underestimation, one millimeter underestimation in midline shape between transcranial Doppler and uh, CT. And I believe this one millimeter will not change the management. You see Transcranial Doppler here is talking about in this uh, neuroradiology, talk about the same idea about midline shape. So, the people, once transcranial Doppler was discovered, the people talk about, please look for the brain. You can find a very important information in the brain, not only in the flow of the brain vessels. All the recent study, unfortunately, they are talk about the flow velocity, talk about the SMAT, talk about the variable safety index, talk about the brain this criteria, talk about all about the blood vessels of the brain. But I believe brain parenchyma deserve to look for and to do a study about that. Mega study. Okay, let us talk gray and white matter. In CT, as you all know, the gray matter appear white which is superficial here and white matter appear dark white matter dark because of myelin sheet here myelin sheet because of the white matter and this is the dendrites and nerve cells as you see light color or uh, light gray white gray light gray uh, gray matter and dark color which is the white matter this is not the case in CT CT you will find the gray matter is gray and white matter is white. You see, here is the beauty transcranial Doppler, great transcranial Doppler. This is from the right side. I am putting my phase array probe here in the right side and looking for the brain. This is the lateral, this is the medial, this is the medial, this is the other side of the brain. Okay, as you all of know, if you know now, this is the beauty, this is the beauty butterfly which is the midbrain and as you see here this is the middle cerebral artery this is the middle cerebral artery here red because it's coming flow coming towards my probe and you see here choroid plexus appear white and this the bone appear very echogenic and you see here this is the gray matter appear gray and this is the white matter appear white what else from left side, this is the left side, this is the temporal bone, this is the midline, this is the other side of the brain, this is lateral, this is medial, this is anterior, this is posterior. As you see here, this is the great butterfly, which is a brain stem, cerebellar here appear white, gray matter is gray, and white matter is white. Okay, good. Let us go bedside. Now, we are dealing with this transcranial Doppler in daily basis. Let us go to bedside. 
A 50 years old male patient known case of hypertension, diabetes, admitted to our ICU because of right side weakness, galaspochoma scale 10 over 15. He was hemodynamically stable, well saturated to 2 liter nasal cannula, and because of snoring and accumulating secretion, patient was fully sedated and connected to mechanical ventilation. CT brain was done. There is evolving left side stroke leading to right side hemiplegia in the distribution of middle cerebral artery. Okay, good. Next day, we used to follow up the patient by transcranial Doppler every day. And when the situation required, I asked the nurse, once I saw the patient, I asked the nurse about checking the pupil. We are checking the pupil frequently in this type of patient. It was two millimeter equal bilateral reactive one hour back. While I am putting my phaser ray probe here in the right side, I find this horrible hyper echoic area in the, this is the left side, in the right side. I, it's horrible hyper echoic area in the right side. I did mad because something very dangerous happening for this patient. I did optic nerve data on the right side, horrible distension here, as you see, optic nerve from here to here, it is 0.75, the cut value of 0.58, it is horrible increase. Left side, 0.67, horrible. I immediately did internal carotid Doppler. There was diastolic reverse, reversal diastolic flow of the internal, jug, internal carotid artery, which is very bad side. It's going with brain death. This is the other side, brain death. A full package in a couple of minutes. We checked the pupil immediately. It was now dilated, fixed. So we gave order of 200 cc mannitol 20%. Less it's 40 and the hyperventilation was done and the neurosurgery surgical uh, was informed immediately. Patient went immediately to CT and from there to operating theater where decompression correcting was done. Patient came to ICU with preserved cup reflex and this celebrating but unfortunately died three days later. This is the CT of the patient. As you see, this hemorrhage, I get it in a couple of seconds by transcranial Doppler. Okay, I have a lot of cases. I will say 100 cases uh, during my uh, job for this transcranial Doppler uh, years, years back. There was amazing correlation between PCD and CT. Let us see. This is a gentleman. This was young male patient presented with this bad hemorrhage. And as you see here, I'm here on the left side. Here is the right side. I'm looking for the frontal area, which reveals this hematoma, corresponding to this hematoma. You can get this image immediately and imagine a lot of times in the emergency room, you cannot go with the patient to CT immediately because the patient is unstable. So the solution will be the transcranial doctor. Here is the CT of the left basal ganglia bleed. Here you see, here is the left side basal ganglia bleed. I am putting my probe here in the right side with the probe and looking for the bleed in the left side here. Here is the middle cerebral. What else? Here is the right side, basal ganglia bleed. I'm putting my probe here on the left side and find this is a third ventricle. Third ventricle, you see here is above this cut, third ventricle, and you see here the right basal ganglia bleed. You see this amazing views. You can get it in very, in no time, and fortunately with less experience. What else? even in the bleed in the very thick areas you see here this is a brain stem you see there is bleeding in the brain stem this is a midbrain i'm tilting my probe up 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 i see this hemorrhage in the brain stem okay. you see the correlation with the city this is the brain stem hemorrhage from and all around here hemorrhage all around here hemorrhage you see very clear correlation. You see, and the craft hemorrhage, white screen hemorrhage, and here hemorrhage white screen. 
in very tricky areas in this patient you see this is the butterfly area of the midbrain the hemorrhage here in front of the midbrain here in this area hypothyroid area and you see here this is the fleet here and this is the fleet here very good correlation okay the idea here you can with training to diagnose in high accuracy the intracerebral hemorrhage by transcranial Doppler, you will find hyperechoic mass compared to the nearby brain tissue. And this is highly correlated with the CT brain. And I believe this is very, very important. Experience should be mastered by anyone working in the critically uh, critically care area this i will finish by this case which is amazing really this is a 41 years old patient came to rr with history of severe headache followed by sudden onset of deep coma 41 years come to rr severe headache followed by sudden onset of deep coma you are talking about severe hemorrhage you are talking about subarachnoid hemorrhage this is a scenario of the very 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 a bad hemorrhage in a young patient. I did the transcranial. As you see here, this is the third ventricle. This is the midbrain. This is the gray matter. This is the white matter. As you see here, there is no distension of the midbrain, of the third ventricle. I didn't see any bad differentiation, any hemorrhage between uh, in the brain. I did the midline shift. It's very minimal compared to yani, min, very minimal shift. You are talking about milli. Uh, yani if you this is the short 6.35, this 6.60, or talk about 1.5 milli, non significant, very, very small uh, value. I did close study of the cerebral vessels. It was great. This right middle cerebral artery, left middle cerebral artery. Very good systolic flow. The systolic flow, the relation is okay. Here is okay. And moreover, optic nerve sheet diameter is normal. So, despite the history given by the relative of the patient that there is very bad belief in the way, but I did full study of transcranial Doppler. There is no bleed by transcranial Doppler, no midline shift, no increase in size of third ventricle, and optic nerve sheet diameter is okay. And the flow study of the vessel of the uh, cerebral arteries was were okay. So, I did CT, it was okay. Investigation revealed severe methanol toxicity with osmolar gap of more than 100 milliosmol per liter. So, this is some clues about, some cases about the value of transcranial Doppler. I repeat again, the idea here is very clear. We can use transcranial Doppler not only in flow study of the cerebral vessels to detect the spans, to, to, to detect the obstruction, to detect the brain death, to detect the high PI, extra, and we can use the transcranial Doppler to look for the brain tissue, to diagnose recent hemorrhage, to diagnose midline shift. I believe I give a lecture about midline shift and this lecture about use of uh, transcranial Doppler in uh, diagnosis, immediate diagnosis of the cerebral hemorrhage, and I believe this deserve a lot of studies and I would be happy if anyone contacted me to do studies about in this area. And I hope to see you in Bahrain uh, next Friday and Saturday. Uh, we'll talk about uh, transcranial Doppler and optic nerve sheet diameter. We'll try to do a workshop and we'll give a very amazing lecture about these topics. Uh, see you in Bahrain, inshallah. Bye-bye.